I'm Lou Zona, your host of At The Butler. Uh, we've got a great show for you today. We're going to look at an exhibition of Cleveland area artists, actually African American artists who have made their mark nationally, but who who are part of the of the Cleveland School. And we've got a a, a, a great guest uh, to assist us, and and I think you're going to enjoy this show. And then we're going to we're going to talk a little bit about a, a few other exhibitions that are happening here at the Butler Institute uh, this month and running through through uh, most of the winter. I think you're going to really really uh, enjoy your your next visit to the Butler Institute. But without further ado, let's get to our guest. And of course, no stranger to this program, no stranger to, to culture in Youngstown. We're talking about Professor Al Bright. And Al, welcome to Atha Butler. Thank you very much, Lou. It's always nice to be here again. You know, it makes, uh, makes me uh, really, uh, it, there's a special warmth that I have towards you. And it's not only because of your contribution, but on a personal level. Uh, you brought me to Youngstown, you and John Aberesny, uh, many years ago. And I really appreciated that, and I continue to appreciate it. Uh, you were my teacher, you were my mentor, and uh, it's a thrill to have you on the program today. Well, Lou, you, you are an exemplary person <laughs> and a, a model person in the, in the history of art. Oh, aren't you nice to say that? Well, we've got a great show that you were, that, that uh, you know, you were a part of, of, of getting this thing together. What exactly um, is the exhibition? Let's, let's just assume that our, that our friends have, have not been here and have not heard of this show. Well, about uh, three years ago, uh, the uh, Cleveland uh, Foundation of the Arts under Ann Brown um, organized an advisory group to start thinking about this show as part of uh, Cleveland's uh, celebration of their 200-year uh, bicentennial uh, program. And they wanted to include a uh, scholarly examination of the role of African American African American artists mm -hmm. <clears throat> in the development of Cleveland art. And so an advisory committee was called together about three years ago, maybe four. It's been okay. a long time. Right. We did work for a good two years on pulling this exhibit together, and this is the culmination of all of that work. <clears throat> Several uh, scholarly articles were written. Uh, by artists uh, zeroing in on photography, painting, and uh, graphic and sculptural arts. And uh, the works were collected very carefully, and it was assembled and uh, premiered in Cleveland last year. And it opened uh, during the bicentennial uh, celebration at the Cleveland Institute of Art, mm -hmm. or the Cleveland uh, State University right, Museum. Right. And it's traveling here. This is the second uh, stop of the exhibit, and then it's going to Columbus after this. I think it's a major, major exhibit. It's an uh, uh, exemplary show of the contribution of African-American artists to the culture of American art, and particularly to the Cleveland School. Right. And a lot of very important artists are included in this show who uh, gained uh, astounding recognition during the WPA project period in the 1930s, but have since uh, kind of fallen out of popularity and are now having their resurgence. You had mentioned, uh, as you and I walked through the show earlier today, you had mentioned uh, one or two artists who were actually employed by the WPA who, who, whose work continues to be enjoyed in, as murals, et cetera, in public buildings. Oh, absolutely. Like. And uh, it's, it's really significant that several of the major uh, artists in this exhibit are still alive and still working. And mm -hmm. it's wonderful to see them get their recognition before death. But Charles Sali uh, is, a, is a major, major player. He, right was a significant graphic designer, um, muralist, portrait painter, um, lithographer uh, during the WPA. He did some very important projects in uh, the Cleveland area. He designed the, uh, the, uh, the grand ballroom at the Stouffer's uh, Hotel, mm -hmm. which is one of the architectural wonders of Cleveland uh, in terms of interior design. And he's still very actively working um, in the Cleveland area and will be here for the opening oh. on, uh, on the 12th. 
And of course, uh, a, 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 a wonderful favorite, uh, Huey Lee Smith yes. is in the exhibit. Yes, Huey Lee is uh, internationally important mm -hmm. as a painter, a retired professor from the uh, Cleveland on, or the Art Institute in, uh, in uh, New York for the Student League, the Art. Well, he's very community. he's very much loved uh, in the uh, international art community, and uh, we're thrilled that, that he's a part of this exhibit. But but, but this show really, um, there are the Huey Lee Smiths in it, but then there are also artists that, that are, are barely known about. You'd, you'd mentioned one that, that whose work was basically thrown out at his death. Yes, uh, his name uh, ended up to be Benny, Benny Koosh. Um, Benny Koosh, uh, was, his original name is Charles Harris, but uh, he was somewhat of a recluse of an artist. He painted profusely, uh, was very popular in uh, the Cleveland area. Everyone knew him, but he uh, sheltered his art, never showed it. Right. And uh, <clears throat> in the last seven or eight years of his life, he started signing his work, Benny Kush. He changed his name, he changed his religion, and um, went into seclusion. And when he died, um, they threw out all of his works in a, wow. on a trash heap. Wow. Uh, some 900 works were retrieved uh, from, from a trash heap. And a gallery uh, salvaged the works and uh, now they're under the protection of the uh, Cleveland Artist Foundation and, and uh, starting to circulate. But uh, when you see his work in this exhibit, you'll see a visionary, right. a man with a, a great artistic talent and someone who was truly gifted as a, a visionary in the arts. And there, and, and there are other stories like that on these walls in this exhibition. And I think, it, I, I think that also speaks of the significance of this project. Yes. I think the show is replete with those kind of stories of um, unknown and very uh, highly skilled and talented people who didn't get their dues in their time period but are beginning to be discovered now as we gain more interest in this whole area. And of course, um, uh, there are women uh, in the exhibit, and women artists have always had a tough time uh, uh, getting recognized, and, uh, and, and this exhibition showcases some pretty stellar um, uh, talents. Absolutely, and also some outstanding photographers. Right. Photography also has had a kind of a, has been thought to be a secondary art, but uh, we're, we're beginning to realize that not, any, not anybody can be a photographer. Absolutely not an artist <laughs> photographer. Yeah. Um, now, I'm, we, all have, we all have personal favorites, and, and uh, as you wander through this exhibition, um, mention one or two, just from a very personal level, uh, artists who have meant something to you here, inspirations perhaps. Well, of course, Charles Ali is a, a personal friend and uh, a person whom I, I've done a lot of research on and had an opportunity of really knowing and meeting. I, I really admire his work. His, his work is really at the top of African-American art. As a matter of fact, um, in James A. Porter's uh, important book on African-American art, which was published back in the 40s, Charles Sali was the uh, last entry in his book, and he said that the, uh, the Negro race owed Charles Sali uh, a, a debt wow. for his contributions to, uh, to the arts because his work was internationally important and strong. Wow. He's won all sorts of awards and recognition in his time period and uh, was in a still listed uh, as one of the last living post-impressionist American painters uh, in the United States. Wow. Uh, his work is extremely important in collections, and I, I really admire his ability to draw and to compose. But there's another very important person in the, uh, the exhibit that's uh, works by Douglas Phillips, okay. who just died uh, in the last uh, year. He was an important stained glass artist, mm -hmm. also a, an, an incredible graphic uh, designer and uh, a painter. But he, he did some of the most important uh, stained glass windows in churches in the United States mm -hmm. and was 
nationally known, and conducted a very important workshop in Cleveland. You know, when, when we think about the African-American contribution, uh, we, we generally think in terms of, of music, uh, which is, goes without saying, the great contribution. Theater goes without saying. Dance goes without saying. It seems that the visual arts, however, are not, a, the contribution is not as well known. And maybe it's, it's projects like this that will help uh, make it right. Yes, you know, I mean, <clears throat> I think there's an, uh, one particular important aspect about the Cleveland artists. Most, if not all of these artists that you'll see in this exhibit were touched by an institution in Cleveland called the Karamu House, which was established in 1915 by uh, Russell and Rowena Jelliff, and it fostered uh, talent in the inner city, particularly among African Americans, that catapulted these artists to international importance. Yeah. And they were supported by the, the mainstream uh, Cleveland School artists and the Art Institute, the Cleveland Museum. Uh, Eleanor Roosevelt was uh -huh. one of the sponsors of that institution. And uh, they were very, very special well, as a were, result they of were visionaries. having that uh, contact. Well, let's take a little break. And we, when we come back, we're going we're gonna, to uh, focus on a, a couple of more of the great artists in this exhibition, Yet Still We Rise. And we're back. And this is the catalog uh, of this very special exhibition, Yet Still We Rise. And I, I might note, when you, when you come to the Butler, and, and be sure to pick up the catalog, there's a the most beautiful essay by uh, Professor Bright entitled On Fertile Ground. What basically is the premise of, of the essay, Al? Well, the essay is uh, <clears throat> a story of uh, the contribution made by the Caribou House to these uh, particular artists, mm -hmm. and uh, a documentary on each of the artists and, and their lives. There's a really uh, uh, interesting uh, couple of pictures here by an artist named Elmer Brown. Tell us a little bit about him. Yeah, Elmer W. Brown is one of the premier artists of the, uh, the Karamu. Uh, he was actually raised by the Jellops. He uh, was born in Pittsburgh in 1919, and, and when he was about 16 years old, he ran away from home and was arrested for riding trains with uh -huh. the hobos. And he served time on a uh, Missouri Chang gang. Oh, and that stimulated his art, because mm -hmm. when he came to Cleveland, one of the first things, uh, one of the first talents he developed was uh, lino cutting. And there's a wonderful piece in the show by him uh, called The Old Pecker Wood, mm -hmm. which is a, a beautiful lino cut of his experience on the uh, Chang Gang, and it shows the Chang Gang and the overseer, and, right. and it actually uh, was one of the pieces that gave him recognition. But he went on to become a stage designer. He designed um, the sets for Porgy. I'll be darned. Um, he designed costumes for Emperor Jones. Uh, he became an actor in um, the uh, the Gilp with the Gelpin players. He was a, a muralist. He did the murals for the Cleveland Hopkins Airport and uh, famous murals for the, um, uh, the uh, City Club. Mm -hmm. And Rockwell Kent came to dedicate his mural for the City Club in 1943 and held it as one of the most powerful images of the time. But uh, he was a powerful, versatile painter that later uh, went on to uh, do work with Hallmark in Cleveland, but he had a stellar experience and uh, just did a lot of work. And one of the most important pieces he did was with uh, the WPA projects, working with Edris Eckhart. He did ceramic glazing oh, under that uh, very important several uh, project. Several beautiful pieces in the exhibit. Mm -hmm. And there's also a painting of um, a World War II uh, uh, event that was kind of interesting. Share that with us. Yes, uh, there was a, um, an, uh, an event in the uh, Second World War. Uh, African Americans uh, did not serve as gunners on the ships. They primarily were 
stewards uh, working in the kitchens and so forth on the ships. But there was a battle in the uh, Second World War in which the gunners were uh, uh, primarily wiped out by uh, an air raid. And one of the African-American um, stewards came on deck and started manning the uh, a machine gun and shot down several planes wow. and was uh, honored as one of the uh, uh, heroes of the Second World War. And he captures this in a magnificent, colorful oh, that's, composition that's, that's in the terrific. show. It's a beautiful painting. And, and when you see his work, you'll see muscle tone, strong balance of form and shape. He's quite a, a strong and powerful painter. And one is also taken with the fact that there are certain artists who are, who are classically trained here. And then there are those who were not trained at all, who we might even term primitive artists that have a, have a certain spark. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, a favorite or two of those in the show? Well, uh, of course, Benny, Benny Kush is, is my favorite in, the, in that area, but there, there is another artist, uh, his name is Trotter, who obviously was a self-taught artist, but his works are very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, it's what we might call an outsider artist with that special vision. Uh, what he captures is uh, the essence of uh, his subject matter. So when you see his churches or, or just the face of a Christ, you really feel a, a sense of soul and spirituality emoting from his works. Mm -hmm. But yet you know that this is a, an artist that uh, came to this vision through uh, private training as opposed to academic training. Right. In the Butler collection is a favorite of yours uh, by, by an African-American artist who, who eventually gained a national reputation named Horace Pippin, I know. Yes, yes. And Horace Pippin was a visionary of that sort as well. Was. You know, Al, when we think about when we think about the uh, Cleveland School, we gen uh, Cleveland School of Art, we generally think of Charles Birchfield. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, there, are, there are a lot of names in this exhibition that are now prom will now be prominent as a result of this effort, and it's, uh, it's really to be commended what you've done and what your colleagues have done in putting this all together. Well, I think it's going to uh, really fill in the gaps and uh, historically it will uh, be very important as time goes by. But I'm, I'm very thankful that it's in this venue because it's being shown here as it's never been shown before because of the wonderful facilities, mm -hmm. the excellent installation of the show as well. Well, we're, we're uh, so pleased to have it in Youngstown and we're so happy that uh, you were able to spend these few minutes sharing your thoughts with us about this exhibit and this got to hope, hopefully will encourage everyone to, to come up to the Butler Institute to see this fantastic exhibition entitled Yet Still We Rise and it'll run through February and you're going to have a good time looking at it. Thanks so much y'all. Let's take a quick break. Thank you very much Lou. Okay. And we again want to thank Professor Albright for being our special guest today and, uh, and sharing his thoughts with us. And we're, we also want you to know that on January 12th, January 12th, Sunday, January 12th, uh, that this exhibition uh, officially opens, yet still we rise. Uh, and a number of the artists will be, are actually being bussed in from the Cleveland area to be with us that day. So you'll, you'll want to be here on January 12th for sure. And another one of our guests on January 12th will be uh, just a wonderful painter named Dean Richardson. Uh, an exhibition of his work is currently installed at the Butler Institute. And these are baseball paintings, but not just baseball paintings. As a matter of fact, you don't have to know anything about baseball or even uh, care about the sport uh, to appreciate what this man has done. These are amazing works of art. Um, beautifully crafted with, uh, well, you must come and see it. There's a sense of, of drama uh, in just the way he creates a figure. But there are also historical images, which I think, uh, if you are a baseball fan, you're really going to love these. There is also an exhibition of the collages of the great Paul Jenkins, that painter who was born in Missouri, uh, who eventually uh, grew up in Struthers, Ohio, to become an international star. And uh, the, the exhibition is of, of his collages, his personal collages, right here at the Butler Institute in Youngstown. And then, of course, in our Trumbull facility is a, a, uh, just a, a, a wonderful, wonderful exhibition of his paintings, his current works, 
his large canvases, which I think you're gonna love. And of course, don't forget our, our Salem branch where the Breckner collection of Americana is, is still in place and, and just uh, attracting enormous audiences. So you'll wanna come in uh, to, the, to see the Breckner collection as well. Uh, again, uh, January 12th, mark that on your calendar. And thank you so much for being with us today on At The Butler. <laughs>